Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. I wanted to start a series of shorter videos that highlight some of the tips and tricks I have learned along the way since I got into this hobby. I remember looking at my first mechanical keyboard and wondering, how do I do this? Well, whether you're just getting into this hobby or have been down this rabbit hole for a while, I hope these short tips can be helpful to improve your custom keyboard experience. Welcome to episode one. Let's get started. When I first started with custom keyboards, the bane of my existence was stabilizer maintenance. More often than not, I would hear a small tick or rattle that would just drive me crazy. Then I would tear the whole entire thing apart again to apply more dielectric grease, either ending up having to do it again or left with grease all over the place. That's when I discovered this, hobby syringe. These come in multiple sizes and multiple tips, so you could pick and choose what works the best for you. I will provide some links in the description below. Start by removing the caps around the spacebar so that you could grab both sides and lift it up easily. Hey, that's another freebie tip right there. Then lift up the stabilizer stem, stick your syringe needle into the cavity, and apply the grease around the stabilizer bar to fill any gaps. Here is a closer look at what you do with the syringe and the stabilizer bar. Notice that I'm filling the cavity along the bar so that even if the bar moves around, there is no rattle or noise. The nice thing about the syringe versus using a brush is that you have more control and there's less chance of grease touching the side of the stabilizer stem, making it feel slow and sticky. Once you're done, you get to go back to a nice and quiet stabilizer so you can enjoy the thock of your large keycaps again. This next tip is interesting. Most standard MX switches have full stem travel, so even at max press, the stem is flush with the top housing. However, there are some switches, such as this glorious Panda right here, and all the other Panda variants that have longer stems. This makes it so that at max key press, the stem still pokes out above the top housing surface, like you see. This is especially bad with certain Franken switches, such as this Holy T1, which uses a halo stem with a T1 housing. Notice how much this stem sticks out above the top housing, even at maximum press. Now when you install a switch like this into a socket that uses a stabilizer, you start to run into some issues. As you can see, because the switch stem doesn't go down as far, the stabilizer stem cannot be properly seated into the side posts of the keycap. It results in bad rocking motion that prevents smooth operation or even worse, just stuck keycaps. Here is another view of this happening from the front. You can see how severely this cap rocks side to side because the Holy T1 switch doesn't have enough switch travel. It can easily get stuck or just feel terrible. But there's a fix for this, and that's where these washers come into play. When installed over the stabilizer stem, the washer helps to fill the gap between the keycap post and the stabilizer stem so that you could create a flat and flush install of the keycap. This eliminates the rocking motion and allows for normal operation. Here is another view of the cap with the washer installed, and you can notice how it doesn't rock anymore and the switch actually operates normally. If you don't have washers or want to fix this issue with a plate mounted stabilizer, you can opt to use the tweezer method instead. What you'll be doing is using a pair of skinny angled tweezers like this, pushing it into the stem cavity like you see here. Remember where the stem cavity is. Install the cap, then locate the cavity with your tweezer. 
Then while propping the stem up with your tweezer, push down on the cap so that the cap and the stem are properly seated. This way, the stabilizer can be perfectly straight and operate as intended. Repeat this for the other side as well. Now, your stabilizers will work perfectly even with the long stem switches. One of the best mods you can do for your switch is to film it to make the housing fit tighter. Use a switch opener like this and open up the switch by separating the top housing from the bottom one. Now that you have it open, you could start the filming process. For this demonstration, I will be using a keyboard switch. It is easier to do this if you have a pair of skinny tweezers. Take your bottom housing and gently place the film to fit around the mold. One thing to note is that this little bar in the middle can sometimes cause rubbing and noise issues. Here is an example of that situation. Notice that the film is sticking out a little bit too much on the top. When the film was installed, it was rubbing against the stem during key press, making a noise like this. Here it is closer to the mic so you could hear it better. It's a scratching noise from the stem rubbing against the film. But once again, there is a solution to this as well. Take your film, grab a pair of flesh cutters or a pair of scissors. What you'll be doing is to trim off the center post of the film like so. This will eliminate the source of the scratch and help your switch operate normally again. If you don't want to cut this off yourself, just buy your films from TX. Their films come pre-trimmed. Now once again, grab a pair of skinny tweezers and place the trimmed film onto the lower housing gently. Now you can put your switch back together. You can notice right away that the film is no longer sticking out so much on the top. When you now press the keys, you don't hear the film scratching up against the stem anymore. Here it is closer to the mic to see if you could hear any noise coming from the switch. There you have it! I hope these simple tips and tricks will help you solve some of these common problems you may run into. Please comment below and let me know if this video segment is helpful and if you like me to create more short sessions like this. If you have any tips for me to make videos on, I would appreciate your feedback as well. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and I will have more content for you in the future. Thanks.